Hi, I'm Warren Ely with Ely Hose Reels, and I'm going to demonstrate the assembly procedure for our garden hose reels. Now, every hose reel comes with a very detailed step-by-step -step instruction manual. Don't be intimidated by the number of pages or the number of steps. The assembly process really isn't that bad. It doesn't matter if you're mechanically inclined or not, you'll be able to put this hose reel together. Having said that, let's get started. Your hose reel will arrive in a box like this. The big logo is on the front, there is no logo on the back. To open the box, you want to lay it down and have the logo facing upward. Then you want to open the end by breaking loose the glued end flaps. Once the end is opened, grab the cardboard sleeve and slide the parts trays out of the box. Then lay the contents out for assembly. The hose reel flange and drum assembly consists of two main components, the front flange and the back flange and they're held together with three screws that are included in the clamshell enclosure. The front flange has three equidistant holes for attaching it to the back flange, a large opening for your garden hose to feed through, a rectangular opening for the hose strap assembly, and an extruded base for the crank handle. The back flange is a solid flange with three equidistant pre-installed nuts for attaching it to the front flange. The extra capacity kit consists of a 4 inch drum spacer, a long aluminum axle, three long screws, and a hex key wrench. The three screws that came with your hose reel in the clamshell will not be used. If your kit contained these four items, three flange nuts and one cage nut, you can discard them as they won't be needed for the installation. Step one is to line up the three embedded nuts on the back flange with the three channels on the inside of the spacer. Next, take the front flange and line up these three holes with the channels in the spacer. It doesn't matter which hole lines up with which channel. Now take one of the three long screws that came in the kit and insert it into one of the holes. It should slide down through the aligned channel and onto the embedded nut of the back flange. Then take the wrench and start threading the screw into the nut. Do not tighten firmly until you get the other two screws started. Okay, with all three screws started, Go ahead and tighten them down firmly. Now it's time to attach the crank handle. Using the hex key wrench, remove the pre-installed screw from the crank handle center post. With the front flange facing up, insert the crank handle post into the extruded base from above and insert the screw from below. Thread the screw into the handle. Using the hex key wrench, be sure to tighten down firmly. The cart frame is made up of several pieces, starting with the front cart frame or bumper. And then you've got two legs, a left leg and a right leg. They are different. And then we have the frame Y, two tire spindles, two push-pull handles, and these are the same, they're interchangeable. And then two 10-inch flat pre rubber tires. To attach the tires, first remove the screws from each of the two tire spindles by taking the hex key wrench and loosening the screw from the spindle. Then you should be able to use your fingers to take it the rest of the way out. The next step is to attach the tires. Now each leg has a large hole on one side that will face outward from the frame. And then on the opposite side, there is a small hole which goes to the inside portion of the frame. Now insert the tire spindle into the large hole on one of the legs again with the wedge in the horizontal position. The hub of the flat free tire has a concave side and a convex side. The tire spindle needs to be inserted into the concave side of the tire. Now insert the tire spindle into the large hole on one of the legs, again with the wedge in the horizontal position. Visually align the hole in the spindle with the small hole on the leg and insert the screw that you previously removed and start the threads with your fingers. After you have the thread started, use the hex key wrench to tighten down firmly. Then repeat this procedure by attaching the second tire to the other leg. Look down the end of each leg to ensure the spindle is in the horizontal position. Now it's time to attach the tires to the quad wheel front bumper. You'll first want to remove the pre-installed screws from both spindles. Each tire has a concave side and a convex side. 
you'll want to insert the tire spindle into the concave side. The tire spindle will then be inserted into the large hole on the outside portion of each leg. You'll want to be sure that the tapered edge of the spindle is in a horizontal position, not a vertical position, when you insert it into the leg. So insert the tapered spindle into the large hole, then take the screw that you previously removed from the spindle and thread it back into the spindle through the smaller hole on the inside portion of the leg. Once you get it started, take the hex key wrench and tighten down firmly. When you're done, there will be a little bit of play between the tire and the bumper. The other thing you should do is look down the end of the tube to make sure the tapered end of the spindle got tightened in the correct horizontal position. And now do the same with the other tire. With both tires attached to the legs, now remove the pre-installed screws at the end of each leg. Now we want to attach the legs to the quad wheel front bumper. Start by sliding one leg onto the bumper and insert one of the screws you had just removed. Then do the same with the other leg. Line up the holes and insert the other screw. Now with both legs attached to the bumper, go ahead and thread the serrated flange nuts onto both screws and just finger tighten them for now. This is the frame Y that came with your portable hose reel. The extra capacity kit upgrade will replace this pre-installed axle with a longer extra capacity axle. In order to do that, we're going to partially split it in half. We'll accomplish that by completely removing this long clamp screw and then there are two screws that hold the two halves together. We will completely remove the top screw and only partially loosen the bottom screw. Now to remove this long clamp screw, the best way is to use the built-in pocket on one of the clamps. Hold the nut into this pocket with your finger while you use the hex key wrench to loosen and remove the screw. The frame Y is held together with these two screws. You'll need to remove the top screw completely. One note of caution, this screw may have just a little bit of a greasy type of lubricant on it, so be careful with it around anything that might stain like your clothes, the carpet, or a tablecloth. Once you have the top screw removed, loosen the bottom screw about three or four rotations, just enough to separate the frame Y halves so you can remove the axle. Now inside each side of the frame Y are two little nubs or posts that are designed to align with the holes in the axle. So simply insert the axle into the frame Y, align the holes with the nubs, and press the frame Y halves together, making sure there is a tight fit around the axle. Now it is very important to retighten the top screw first, as you could crack the frame Y if you tighten the bottom one first. A trick to help get the top screw started is to take the long clamp screw that you removed and just barely thread the nut onto it with the rounded edge of the nylon side of the nut first. Then insert it into the frame Y. Place the screw onto the hex key wrench and insert it from the opposite side and start tightening. Once the short screw bites into the nylon portion of the nut, you'll be able to remove the long clamp screw and finish tightening the top screw firmly. Once the top screw is tight, go ahead and firmly tighten the bottom screw. And now you're ready to continue with the rest of your hose reel assembly. The next step is to attach the frame Y to the two legs. So position the frame Y over the legs, then grab one of the leg screws that you previously removed, insert it through the frame Y and both holes in the leg, and then grab one of the leg clamps, this is the tapered one, insert the nut into the pocket. To put the nylon insert nut into the pocket, there is a rounded side and a straight side. You want to put the straight side into the pocket first. Hold the nut into the pocket with your finger, and then get the screw started into it by finger tightening. You can snug it with the hex key wrench, but do not tighten firmly until the other leg clamp is on as well. With the frame Y now attached to both legs, go ahead and tighten both leg screws down firmly. Also, you can now tighten the bottom leg screws down firmly. Now it's time to attach the push-pull handles to the cart. First grab one of the rectangular handle clamps, 
Take the long handle screw that you had removed, insert it through the clamp, then grab one of the handles, make sure that the handle faces outward, slide the screw through both holes in the handle, then slide the screw through the holes in the frame Y, then take the other handle and slide it onto the screw, then take the second handle clamp and slide it over the screw, take your nylon insert nut, straight edge first, and insert it onto the screw and into the pocket and finger tighten them together. With the nut inside the pocket on the clamp, take your wrench and tighten down firmly. Next, take the male end of the inlet hose and feed it through the axle until it just shows out the front. Then slide the flange and drum assembly onto the axle and push it all the way on. Next, take the hose strap assembly and feed the nylon strap through the rectangular opening and push the assembly into place. Next, place the cam lever brake onto the axle by making sure the tab on the brake aligns with the notch in the front flange. The gooseneck portion of the brass swivel can be rotated in either direction to make it easier to install on the hose reel. Now it's time to attach the gooseneck swivel to the inlet hose. Make sure the o-ring gasket is in place, pull some inlet hose out, and then thread the swivel onto the inlet hose. Hand tighten firmly so it won't leak. You can use a pair of pliers if you want to tighten it more securely. And then this aluminum collar threads onto the axle. Make sure everything is pushed all the way on. Push the swivel and inlet hose back onto the axle. Make sure the gooseneck is not hitting the flange. And then thread the aluminum collar onto the axle and tighten to a snug fit. Be careful not to over tighten. Now it's time to attach your garden hose to the hose reel. Feed the female end of your garden hose through the hose strap. If you're unable to fit the fitting through the strap, there are two possible solutions. First, back the hose strap screw out to increase the size of the loop in the strap. Then pull on the hose strap to make sure the loop is as large as possible. If you still can't get the female fitting through, you'll need to feed the male end of your garden hose through the strap in the opposite direction and pull the full length of the hose through the strap. Now you're ready to attach it to the brass swivel. For right hand rewinding, feed the hose through the flange in this direction. For left hand rewinding, rotate the gooseneck to the opposite side of the flange, feed the female fitting through the strap in the opposite direction, and then feed the hose through the flange in this direction. Whether for left or right hand rewinding, the next step is to attach your garden hose to the swivel gooseneck and then rotate it toward the opening in the flange. Now reverse feed the excess hose back through the hose strap for a snug fit against the center drum. Then with a Phillips head screwdriver, tighten the hose strap screw until the strap tightens down onto the hose. It may take quite a few rotations to get the strap to a snug fit. Be careful not to over tighten. Now it's time to roll your hose up onto the reel. First, turn the cam lever brake to the off position. Then start reeling your hose in by cranking with one hand while level winding the hose onto the center drum with the other. Wrap the hose in a steady side to side motion, laying the hose against itself as you go. Once you get all the hose rolled up, turn the cam lever brake back to the on position. To set the cam lever brake, take a 3 8 inch wrench and loosen the adjustment nut until the weight of the watering tool on the end of the hose causes the reel to start unwinding by itself. Then tighten the nut a quarter turn at a time until the reel no longer unwinds by itself. You can adjust the nut to create just the right amount of drag to your liking. Now attach the inlet hose to the faucet and you're ready to use your hose reel. Be sure to have the cam lever on while pulling out the hose. This will prevent unwanted rollout. Then when you're ready to reel the hose back in, be sure to flip the brake to the off position to release the drag making it much easier to reel in. Then reset the brake to the on position so it's ready for the next time you use your hose reel. Well, there you go. Your hose reel assembly and installation are now complete. If you need any assistance or have any questions, you can visit our website 24 seven or reach out to our customer support team during our regular business hours. Thanks again for your purchase of Ely products. We hope you enjoy them for many years to come.